A report released by the South African government shows a grim picture of the country's water resources and water infrastructure. The deadly cholera outbreak in Hammanskral has brought our water systems into sharp focus. The Green Drop Report is a comprehensive auditing system that is designed to improve the overall performance of wastewater treatment plants. Let's get some more perspective on this now with Dr. Kevin Winter, who is with the University of Cape Town's Future Water Institute. Uh, Dr. Winter, thank you for making time for us this afternoon. What does the green and the blue drop reports tell you and, and South Africans about the country's quality of water? What was your assessment of the reports? Well, good afternoon. And I think I should say at the outset, uh, we are pleased to see the report, first of all because there's been very little evidence, in some cases, at least public access to the evidence for some time. So it's put us in the picture, and we are very pleased to see not only that a full report is coming out a bit later in terms of the Blue Drop report in July, but there's a watch report. In other words, an interim report that's giving us a pretty good idea. And as you said in your introduction now, it gives us a really good idea of what's coming up, and it's a comprehensive report as well. So, you know, in full marks in lots of ways to the Department of Water and Sanitation, to the Minister of Water and Sanitation, we're getting data, and that's the first step to trying to put these uh, matters correct. Mm -hmm. uh, but also in introduction was the idea, of course, that there is an overall deterioration in both the quality of water treatment, the Blue Drop report, the Green Drop report, and the no-drop report, which is also there, and the no-drop report is about how much water we are losing, mm. uh, that is non-revenue water or unaccounted water across the country. So overall, some bad news, uh, but also I guess one also says to because we've got that information, we're able to understand where some of the good work is taking place and where the operators are taking pride in what they're doing. So there's good and there's bad news, and sometimes when you average it all out, it does look like we are sliding downwards, and of course that's, uh, that is yeah. the trend. There's no doubt about it, and we can't excuse uh, that particular position. Which it's, it's, unavoid, it, it's unacceptable yeah. uh, to be moving into a downward spiral at this critical moment. Yeah. And, and what do you think are some of the risks of us moving down this um, path? Uh, we, we have seen that you know, these wastewater treatment plants often exceeded their design capacity, their dysfunctional processes, ineffective disinfection equipment, there's poor flow monitoring devices, just to name a few. Yeah, indeed. So the record and the audit is very clear on what has been delivered there. And it goes to what they call a technical report in the blue drop and also in the green drop, which says a number of things about very poor management on the site, of poor monitoring, and in some cases there are 11 municipalities that are identified who have not given any reporting in their, of their water quality at all, uh, that's drinking water, and are seemingly not cooperating with the Department of Water and Sanitation, who is the regulator. And so that lack of, of uh, response from those municipalities really worrying. So if you live in those municipalities, are they testing the water and are you getting water which is safe to drink? And that puts us at huge risk. It puts us at fearful risk because you never know when you open that tap whether that water is actually clean, uh, healthy or not. Yeah. So there are concerns around that. And I think your idea of uh, the what you said just now about uh, the lack of infrastructure, the fact that some of it is old, it's tired, uh, but also it's about uh, the passion that we've lost in keeping water clean. And I do want mm. to emphasize that as well. If you're a water manager, if you're an operator, you hold our health in our hands. And you need to make sure that that is a functional system. And whatever means you have, uh, don't sleep at night because that should be worrying you uh, that your, uh, our health is in the hands of those operators. So strong words from my side uh, because some of this is unacceptable. But some of it, I believe, is also uh, mm -hmm. absolutely avoidable. We shouldn't be going down this route uh, when there actually is the knowledge, the skills, and also the resources to be able to fix it. And I think that's where the yeah. discussion really needs needs to be placed. Yeah. What, what needs to be done in order to improve the overall performance of, of the waste water treatment plants? So a lot of this has to do with the finance and the support that municipal officials are getting to run their tasks. And I think that needs to be looked at. 
That is about organizational management. It's about inspiring people to do uh, and to be involved in water management. And I think that's, for me, what was encouraging about the report is a new language that's emerging here from the Department of Water and Sanitation and also from the minister. It feels one of we are not actually just going to be hitting you with a stick. We're going to try and give you support. And I thought that that was, at least in the report, uh, encouraging. Uh, so that's the first thing. We need to motivate people that this is a really important profession to be involved in. It's an exciting profession to be involved in. And there are new technologies that are emerging that we need to be involved in and grow in our experience of being a technician on a wastewater treatment plant or a water treatment plant so that we can start to make a difference. The technology is there. The know is there. We need to make sure that we bring these together in order to make that kind of impact. Mm. How much is that going to cost? There are those who estimate 8 billion rand is required to achieve compliance in the short term. Yeah, I, and I think it's even higher than that, by the way. I think there are a vague estimates that I've seen that go between 10 and 12 billion uh, on the upgrade, and that's just in the very short term. In the longer term, we could be talking close to 100 billion to be able to get our wasteboard treatment plants across the country up to speed. So it's big money we're talking about, and we need to move fast with that. But in the immediate time, uh, we need to make sure that those that are non-compliant have got to be fixed as soon as possible. Uh, we can't have the potential for outbreaks of cholera like we've seen uh, happening in Hammond's Kral. And let me just add, by the way, we're still not certain that what has happened in Hammond's Kral is related directly to the water. And I say that very carefully because that analysis is still taking place and it seems to be very confusing and difficult to get at the actual causal matter. And it may not be uh, because of the water alone. Mm, yeah. What do we have the necessary capacity and skills, uh, Dr. Winter? How's the capacity with, for instance, municipal wastewater managers and even process controllers to operate and maintain the, the treatment of storage? Well, there are plenty of courses that are going on around the country that are helping uh, to upskill uh, treatment um, managers, technicians, uh, operators. There's no excuse for this. And if there's not a course that's easily accessible, we need to make them. And part of that course is not just about the technical aspects of managing the treatment works. It's also about managing and governing these systems more effectively. And what I mean by that is that it's, it's much more than just simply technical um, understanding of water quality of the actual infrastructure that's required. We need managers who actually understand and know how to manage effectively, manage, know how to work in an organization effectively as well. So it's more than just the technical side. But those courses exist, and there's no reason why people are not being given time off to really get, become upskilled in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Dr. Kevin Winter, thank you for making time for us. He's with the University of Cape Town's Future Water Institute.